Hi, my name is Felix Fry. And I'm Marco Rajnika. We're here to find great trading opportunities that target 150 to 400% returns. And you, well, you're going to help us do it every single day. So welcome. This is the Winning Picks Podcast. This podcast is for educational purposes only. Options Geek LLC is not a broker dealer. Options Geek LLC, Felix Fry, and Marco Rajnika are not registered investment advisors. Keep in mind, options involve substantial risk and are not suitable for everyone. Please consult your own investment advisor before doing any trading. Make sure you read the full disclaimer at the end of this episode. Mr. Marco. Mr. Felix, <laughs> what's up? Yeah. Good What's you? going on, man? What's going on? How's everything? All right. All right. All right. We're all right. alive, alive and well breathing. Yes. Good. Good. The uh, this inflation number was hot. Came in hot today, and yes, it uh, was. You know, the, it, it's interesting now. You, you're seeing. I guess the one thing you, we can dissect the numbers a million ways. Everybody's doing. It. Who cares? At the end of the day, prices are up. The one point, the, the points that I look at are what I try to. I try to figure out what's up. Like in that number, what's actually up? And you know what's up? Rent cars, autos, and food, <laughs> which is everything for, you know, necessities, that, 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 yeah. the, the necessities of life and, and what people actually spend most of their money um, and, and time uh, around. So uh, it's interesting. It's, you know, there's clearly some pressure in the everyday normal stuff that the consumer is experiencing. You know, the, the interesting part is that you're seeing these arguments coming out of the banks, even the Fed, transitory, not transitory, it's inflation, it's hyperinflation, it's not, at the end of the day, I, I, it's, where do the weeks go? We're almost at the end of this week. Mm-hmm. The, the time flies, but it was only, it was maybe now two months, two and a half months ago, three months ago, I said the S word, which is not a word that any uh, economist wants to hear, or any investment bank, which is, you know, potentially stagflation, where prices, there's so much money going around, yeah, prices have to go up because there is so much money buying goods and whatnot. Prices go up. You've given, you've now for the first time given people money directly into their account, so they actually can spend it and buy consumer goods. So w- why couldn't prices go up? And actually, uh, the arg- the counter argument to inflation is that Goldman is saying it's transitory. Don't worry. The Fed is saying things are, are not going to last because. Uh, you know, there's not going to be this uh, opening up of unemployment and, and 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 basically people going to get jobs and, and open up in, in in the economy and, and people going to get jobs because we're it's going to be a little bit slower than what people think. Well, I mean, isn't that you know slower growth, higher prices? You know, maybe the, maybe everybody's arguing the same thing. There's going to be slower growth, and the other ones arguing there's going to be higher prices. You know. Mm-hmm. It's like Budweiser commercial, like tastes less filling, tastes great. Less right. I mean, that's what I think about. It. I think the whole world is just, I mean, it's gone a little crazy with the arguments. It's like just picking half the story. How about maybe it's just both? Maybe there's a lot of dollars. Prices are going to go up with what people care about and people are getting paid to not work. And so that's not going to happen. And growth isn't going to happen until that's cleared up. So, let you know, let's move on and figure out what, what's uh, at this point. The bond market is saying one and a half on the 10 year that's come down. They're basically saying the similar thought that there's not going to be this inflation, but maybe it's maybe it's all wrong. Maybe it's stagflation. I don't know. Just throwing out there. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's a zero possibility. I think you know it, the more data you see, the, uh, the the incremental chance that it could be that, which would be the worst case scenario for um, our markets. Okay, right. so that's that's all I'd say about the inflation number. Um, okay. The other thing I wanted to point out was um, the UPS upgrade stuck's down from from the highs here a little bit but you know they came out and basically JP Morgan upgraded the stock basically saying what we've been saying for a few months where you know they have this pricing power and they're going to start using strategy to um to to make money off of that right mm-hmm. and you know we we gave out a video on Amazon logistics and how they get a product from their factories to your door in a day and I think it's a brilliant video. The way they did it was awesome. It also raised a lot of questions to me thinking, you know, they need, they need UPS. So why would, and FedEx already told Amazon to get lost. UPS is their last mile. 
Amazon's whole business is predicated on getting the package to you in a day, in 24 hours. Without UPS, they can't do that. Well, they could. They can go to U.S. Post Office. How's that going to work out? That's not going to work out good at all, right? Mm -hmm. And and so, you know, UPS has got to be sitting there going, they need us. For their whole business to work, they need us. And Amazon's worth $1.8 trillion, and UPS is sitting there trying to scratch, uh, you know, $100 billion, I think. I don't even know what it is. But, you know, they're trying to, they're trying to keep pace. And I think that – I think – I think everybody's looking at themselves in a the mirror. You guys going, you know, we're kind of like, we're, we're kind of needed. Our network is actually needed. Now, Amazon's going so fast that they're trying to build their own UPS. So, you know, that's the, that's a, that would be a long term negative maybe on UPS and FedEx. But for the mm -hmm. time being, man, if you told Amazon, we're going to charge you more, is Amazon going to say no? How are they going to get to the person for that last mile? You can't. So right. I don't know. It's, it's very interesting. Um, it's very interesting, uh, sort of, uh, the way the way the game is being played right there, but I think mm -hmm. UPS maybe have fi has figured it out, and that's what they're going to start doing. Um, the next thing is yes. how about the, yes. the game? game yes. Do you see this GameStop? Baird downgraded. The stock is down. Um, mm -hmm. This is the uh, the OG, the original, uh, the original meme. Yeah. It's interesting on the downgrade. He basically says the longer run, the longer this guy CEO Cohen doesn't have a plan. Um, mm -hmm. The worse, the worse it, uh, the the worse it gets. Um, so, let, let, let's 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 think about let's think about how. Actually, but first, before let's just do some. Let, you want to do some cleanup? Yeah, let me let me let's say let's sweep let's, a few things first, and then we okay. can get into that. Yeah, because yeah, that's going to be a good mind. section by itself for sure. Okay, okay. So I, you want to you want to do our cleanup, which is Tesla, sure. right? Tesla, yes, I've All seen right, something so Tesla. on Tesla today. Um, so this is kind of oh, I thought you wanted to do the put. Okay, okay. okay. Oh yeah, we're gonna do the put. Well, let's let's do some news okay. first. But it seems like kind of silly news, uh, despite what they're saying. So they're saying that ethical failures, uh, Tesla dropped from sus sustainability ETF in oh, Australia somewhere, and they're saying like. Oh, when they build a factory in Germany, that region is not going to have enough water for people to drink, this and that, blah, blah, blah. Is that and the I mean, same article? Yeah, it's in the same article. Yes, yes, yes. And you would assume, so, you know, something's going to happen to the stock. Yeah, so, but, uh, so, here, so here's here's my, my thinking. I, I did see the headline. I, I just saw Australian ETF sustainability. And frankly, I mean, it, it, it feels like reaching now. It feels a little desperate. Um, the German word I didn't read, but that feels even more desperate. Uh, you know, we have this put spread. Let's just take a look at the the, the option board. Let's look at this put spread because I, I was actually today thinking the stock's trading okay. You know, it's actually I look at the stock and I think, you know, yeah, we're looking at four five hundred. But I, you know, I want to give credit with credit too. When it trades, when it when it makes a higher um, a higher low on the way down, it's supposed to have gone down and it didn't. The market's holding up and the stock is up when there's negative news. You know they've thrown everything. The German water seems desperate. I mean, that's just uh -huh. it, it. Just seems desperate. So they're throwing everything at it. Um. So I, you know, just on the sustainability, I was thinking, let's give someone like uh the let's go the other way a little bit with with um this what I thought was a pretty good trade. If you own the stock or you have calls, you can layer this in. But we we are looking at let's do the put side first, just to to price it in here and and mark ourselves today. So the five fifties are two and a half. Right now, two and a half for next week, and the six forty. So it's five bucks, and the six forties are let's call it thirty. Let's call it thirty-five bucks. So five, five and a half, five, five bucks, and thirty-five bucks, thirty bucks. Let's mark it at thirty today, um, and you can see here stocks up fourteen dollars to two and a half percent. Okay, so mm -hmm. let's call that. I, I again, it's going to get increase it increasingly volatile from here on out. It can go to zero, or if it goes the other way, it's going to go to sort of 60, 70 bucks, um, whichever way Tesla is going to go. But I, that, that's the point to show you the volatility. To, to show you a new trade, I, I just th thought I'd show you this one because I, I liked it. I looked at it earlier today. Um, it might have moved up a little bit, but let's see here. I was looking at, let's play this to the upside. Let's let's sort of think about, um, you know, Tesla 650 calls um, versus the 700 calls. So I can do the 650, 700, one by two. Okay, just like we did the put spread, the 650, 700, one by two, and I can do that for $23, $24 here. Let's call it buy 24 and sell about 11 and a half. So 24. So for $1, I can do the 650, 700 call spread for $1. Okay, that means my break evens uh, on this trade are 651, 650 plus $1, 651, and 
um, basically forty nine dollars. Okay, forty nine. So, oh. so seven forty nine. Anywhere between six fifty one and seven forty nine, um, I would make you know I would make some uh, make some money. Okay, that's nice. That, so that that to me is a good overlay. Your long stock, you could put this on for a dollar, and you get from six fifty to seven hundred. You're gonna make double the double the amount essentially of what you own. It's in July. The reason I chose July was because I didn't want to have the earnings in there. So mm -hmm. I didn't want there to be, I didn't want surprise. If there's a surprise, okay. We don't know what the surprise would be to the upside, um, but let there be a surprise. You could still, you'll still have plenty of time in general, in general to get out of this, um, probably even up money. Not a lot. If it starts going up there quickly and you're saying, you know what, this can go to 800. I don't want to stick around on this. You know, the $1 probably at that point would be anywhere from two to five, I would say, depending on how fast it would go up there. But, um, you know, I, I think that I think that it's interesting, especially if you own stock um, and or you have maybe the 600 calls in, so say August or something like that, or somewhere where you're covered. The 650, right. 700, one by two for a dollar. We can mark that today and, and we'll follow that. But I think that's a that's a good trade in Tesla. Cool. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. Um, but let's go back to so now so I guess Tesla was the original OG. Then then it was GME and G, GameStop is getting hurt here a little bit. Um, stocks down, they had earnings. I mean, what's it to say? I, I think that part of it might be this announcement by Microsoft, mm -hmm. right? So we have this Microsoft announcement where Microsoft is saying what they're saying, the Xbox, the Xbox is, uh, they haven't manufacturers, TV manufacturers talk, talk with them about putting the Xbox in the streaming services and on the TVs, right on the TV. So you buy a TV and Xbox is automatically there. That's pretty cool. That's a that's big news. They've been talking about this, but now to actually have it, um, I, I think it's interesting. Uh, so, you know, the story is they do this, and my immediate thought was, okay, when Netflix, if you th if they call it Netflix of uh, the ne the the Netflix for for gaming, right, uh -huh. Microsoft. Uh -huh. Well, if that's what it is, you know, what did Nef Netflix ultimately need? They needed content. They needed. Disney shows and MGM shows, and they needed series and documentaries. They needed content. Content is king, right? The technology can get it, gets us there, but then you actually have to entertain us. And um, when I thought about this, I just thought, of course, there's only three big players. You have ATVI, Take Two, and Electronic Arts. Those are your, let's call it, the ATVI is like the friends of uh, you know broadcast TV, right? If you play Friends at, on Hulu or Netflix, you're gonna get millions of people that buy the product just mm -hmm. because they want to see that series. You know, it, you know if Microsoft gets people on this and doesn't have to actually sell the consoles anymore and they're doing all their streaming, um, you, you know how do how how do they not want the best content to be? I mean, to me, I just thought. They should just buy ATVI or buy it. There's going to be a race to buy these guys. And and I think to some extent they're underpriced. Not only are they in the trend of gaming, these gaming stocks, but they're also um they're also in in it's gaming plus first party data, plus you got to think about what we said yesterday, finite number of time in a day right. and finite number of people and the, if you've got someone playing a game for six hours, you're taking those six hours away from Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, uh, uh, Snap, Pinterest. So, you know, the, owning time is really the answer uh, going forward because what owning time, you can do a lot of different things. You have the person in your box. Mm -hmm. You know, th this is a big move by Microsoft. And and again, there's only three big players in the gaming side. Yeah, you got the Roblox and you got the Unity and those things that are producing games and whatnot. But as far as like the real, the games that people play and the consumer games that people are, are, are eating up for the last 15 years, there's those three, right? And and so Microsoft should, I, I still think my, Microsoft, Microsoft should buy they should buy a few people, but I think ATV is one, okay? And I think that it would fit nicely with their vision and what they're trying to do. Imagine you're getting millions and millions of people that would just jump on to, they're buying TVs to jump on to get the Xbox with the TV. Uh, to mm -hmm. me, that's 
that's sort of amazing. Um, right, and and that's their first step into becoming just cloud gaming. So it is, right, cloud, cloud, exactly. And they actually have competition there with PlayStation, um, Google, and NVIDIA, I think. Sure. And when you think about just what you said, if they get ATVI and they make those games exclusive just for Xbox, just for Microsoft, I mean, that's huge. That's it's the future, I think. It's hard. It is. It's hard model. to be. But yeah. then what does that mean for, for the GME, right? So, so Baird is talking about that and saying, right. you know, how you get to compete with Microsoft and whatnot. To 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 stocks down twenty percent here. They also had uh, a letter from I guess the government asking for documents. I I, I don't think that's going to affect um, uh, GME uh, that much. Um, but I I will say, I think that was GME. Was that GME or AMC? That GME, got, right? GME GME yes. right. They had some, mm-hmm. about the trading and whatnot. I, I don't think GME the company did anything wrong. They're probably looking at the timing of the announcements, whether anything was leaked or whatnot. But I mean. People are trading the stock. That's their business. GME is just running their own business. Um, the the one thing I would point out that I thought was um, interesting, and you know, it's not getting much credit, but you know what, Baird Baird made Baird made the downgrade today, saying that Cohen every day that Cohen doesn't have a plan, the stock should be sold essentially. Right? It's it's mm-hmm. just another day where everybody's eating their lunch. Well, that's fine. I, I understand what he's saying, but you you know, Cohen just nab two Amazon execs um, and put them as CEO and here fellow Amazon veteran Mike Recupero and Matt Furlong. Furlong was Amazon's Australian business. Uh, he's going to be C- CEO and fellow Amazon veter- veteran Mike Recupero will serve as CFO. You know, people, you know, you're talking about Bezos is one of the, the, the smartest guys in the world and to get to become an executive at Amazon, you got to be pretty brilliant and smart in, in your own way, and and you got to be able to you got to be able to keep up with Bezos. Mm-hmm. This guy Cohen gets to hire these guys. These people don't leave Amazon without hearing the story, right? They you know, to hire them, you have to tell them the story. Brian Cohen may, maybe didn't tell the world yet the story, but surely he told these two the story, right. and these two left Amazon because they bought the story. At this price, to me, that's pretty amazing. You know, everybody could say the stock should be worth thirty, but again, I keep saying it's trading here at two forty-five or so, millions and millions of shares, and they just nabbed two guys that actually heard the story. Okay, I know Baird, you didn't hear the story, but you know what? These two guys did hear the story, and they wound up leaving their jobs at Amazon and saying, you know, we want to catch this. We we, we believe in that story, and we're going to try to catch the the next uh, big run here. That's pretty positive, mm-hmm. you know. So there's, there's, yeah, there's a negative that he hasn't told the story yet, but there's also this, this positive where he has told the story to the people that he's hiring, and the people that he's hiring are, are just really good people, really good executives. So I, you know, I, I, I don't know what to make out of the price today. I'm just trying to point out the positive and the negative. I get the analyst saying that it's not worth it because he doesn't know the story, but. Just because he doesn't know the story, that doesn't mean there is a there isn't a story. Right. Okay. So mm-hmm. that's GME, and and GME of course leads us to all the other names, the meme names. Um, you know, they again, you know, fairly dominant in the in the UOA board here. Um, I, I look that they're buying calls in a lot of these names still. Okay, but what's happening? I, I wanted to point out one um, to show you. So they're buying calls in. Still buying calls. I'm seeing an AMC. The rocket has calmed down a little bit. Um, the the clove mm-hmm. obviously has, has been down from the highs here. We talked about that yesterday. CLF, they've been buying stuff here. Um, but it's been a little bit of, of uh, a wishy-washy trading day for these. And I want to point out this one. So this one, to give you an idea, yesterday, yesterday traded, closed at, this is Wish. Okay, wish.com. So yesterday this closed at ten dollars and sixty cents. Okay. Today it's mm-hmm. up 21 cents. The 12 and a half calls yesterday in July. 12 and a half calls in July. Yesterday closed at I'm sorry, June. June. 12 and a half calls were June 12th. No, I'm sorry. Looking at July's, July 12 and a half calls were 235, 240, 235, 240. Okay, that's how much they were yesterday. Today, today they're 
one two two dollars two oh five. Okay, the stock is up today two percent, right. and the call options are down thirty about thirty percent thirty cents. Okay, so stock up calls should have gone up. Instead, they killed the calls by thirty cents. I talked to you yesterday about um, you know the whole. The, I brought this into play and talked to you about the game, the setup. Right, this was Rocket, but it, it could be any one of these names. Could be Wish. Right. The the game, the defense that Citadel has, the defense that Citadel has is this number. OK, that's their defense. They raise it and they move it around however they want. They use skew, which is this number up here, and they use the at the money implied volatility to move things down and up as they see fit. That's how they make money. By doing nothing, they have basically taken out 30 cents from these 12 and a half options 12 and a half calls in july okay so i wanted to show you one where most of them are down and the options are down but i wanted to show you the effect that the this stock is up and the options are actually down okay it's one of the few that the stock is up and and most of them are, are kind of under pressure today so i i think it's very very important to understand this dynamic that it's not it's not anything more than them literally turning the dial down okay so you have you know on most of these let's look at Let's look at uh, Clove, right? You have here, what's going on here? Anyway, it's down, but I, I don't know why it's not showing some of these here. Maybe they're new. Uh, these might be new options. So in Clove, you have the stock down. So if you were long calls, you would be losing on the stock. And just like in Wish, where you, you actually, you don't see it on the way down, you may not see it. It's easy to see when the stock is up and I can show you that the option's down. But you're going to lose money on your, on your call options with at $1.70. And you see this number right here? That's Citadel taking the dial down. You're also going to lose another 20, 30 cents, maybe 40 cents on, on what they've taken down without you even seeing it. Okay, so that's what I call about. I, I call the invisible cost in doing business when the options are trading at 300, 400, 500 volatility. Okay, and I think it's very important that as a lesson, people understand that and, and people um, appreciate what we're trying to say here. This is uh, one part of the game, you know, getting through, getting the stock through these strikes. Okay, and all of these, there's all these strikes. You got to get them through the strikes to get Citadel to be buying stock into it to eventually get the shorts to cover. Okay, but if you don't do that, if you mm -hmm. fail at getting them through strikes, then what happens is all the shares that Citadel was buying down here, they actually have it for sale at the same place. So as it goes down, not only do you want to get out of these calls and you're selling, Citadel's frantically trying to sell out of their shares in Rocket. So in this case, Rocket turns, Citadel has 1.5 million shares, the 25 calls go to, you know, 20 cents or so, very low delta. They're selling, um, they're selling a million shares on top of you selling the calls, which is also selling shares. And they're reducing vol. So mm -hmm. that's how they win in the second phase of the, the battle, right? The first battle, you won. You bought these at a cheap price. You pushed it up. Citadel's playing catch up. As they're playing catch up, they raise the vol. Now, if the if the stock just comes off a little bit and you and then it causes people to sell their calls, then they're selling their stock, pushing it down. You lose on direction and you lose on volatility. So that's that's the lesson for today, and that, and we can see that in Clove that the stocks are down and you're losing on the direction and you're losing on the volatility. You're giving a lot back here, and on Wish we saw that even the stock is up and those things are still getting killed. Okay, weird, but. It goes hand in hand with what you're saying. And I guess for most people, they don't understand what's going on. But I recommend everybody to watch our yesterday's episode to get a full explanation. Yes, it was a good it was a good explanation yesterday. Mm -hmm. Hopefully Definitely. people got a lot out of that. And, you know, again, this is a game, right? We're, we're playing a game. And I want you to be as equipped uh, as you can be mm -hmm. with information and knowledge on how the game is played from their end, right? Whenever right. you're playing any game, whatever game it is, baseball, football, but you want to know you know, how do how are they going to play the game? What's their mm -hmm. strategy? How are they thinking? I'm trying to tell you how they're thinking. I'm trying to tell you what their strategy is and and how they play catch up and how they make back that money. Um, and and one more thing you also said yesterday was focus. That's really important in Wall Street bets. And and people have kind of lost focus a little bit, and that's why they're not as powerful. That is that is a, that is another right. one where it's it's focus is important for that group to actually get mm -hmm. to. Um, you know, take five names. Don't go into twenty thirty. You know, mm -hmm. you, you have enough firepower. There's a lot of money, slash, you know, the, moving around. There's a, you have a lot of firepower to just look at one stock and like, mm -hmm. like one stock. 
Let's mm -hmm. like this stock, you know, and let's focus here. When when the money's spread out, you know, you're gonna need money, you're gonna need firepower when they fight back and they start selling some of that stock at you. They're gonna try to push the stock lower, right? right. Citadel, the, the beauty about it, the the other thing about Citadel we didn't talk about yesterday is the vision they have. We we talk a little about it in the Robin Hood video on, on YouTube, but the vision they have is incredible. They know who's in the trade. And if you know, it's like knowing the cards in poker. When you know what everybody's holding, it's highly likely you're going to win. Can the, can the wrong card come out and you lose because the guy's got to win a hand? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, but but most of the time you're going to win because you know the cards that people are holding. So it's very important. And I think that they, they would do themselves more justice if they kind of stuck together, found three to five names as opposed to 40 names that they're just trying to kill every single short. Um, you know, I, I think that that could uh, that that could help them. Anyway, mm -hmm. so th th that's the meme update for for the day, and and just wanted to go through that. Um, cool. What else is there? I've, I've seen some uh, puts in Pfizer, and that was Pfizer kind of, puts. Yes, surprised that it was puts. Yes, yes. And kind of to relate to that, I read some news today that the uh, CDC said that heart inflammation cases were higher than expected in 16 to 24 year olds after the second dose. But then also I've seen some news that they're uh, buying. The U.S. is buying 500 million. Um, yeah, that's what I saw. Shots, right? that's what I was yeah, that's so, so, so the so the negative news. So, the, so I don't know why I'm looking here. Which one's the June's next week? It's um, interesting buying next yes. week puts. That's interesting. So, um, what do they got here? Fifty. Let's see here. Okay, somebody's selling calls. That looks like that might be open interest. And then they're coming in here to buy next week puts. 10,000. I have no idea why they'd want to buy puts here. It is interesting. Um, I can't discount it. Uh, the one thing I would say is I think that, I, you know, the, the idea with Pfizer's, and I was looking at this earlier today, um, so this is in short CFO for, uh, Pfizer saying expects COVID vaccine margins to improve under one pandemic supply deal. Pfizer is charging the U S 1950 per dose. Mm -hmm. So it's called 20 bucks. Um, not a normal price like we typically get for vaccine, which is 150 to 175 per dose. So pandemic pricing, um, you know, 20 bucks times 500 million is how much it's 10 billion dollars you know yeah. that, that's a big order um uh, and 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 pfizer's getting a bunch of those so the, the idea with pfizer is pretty simple what what i'm looking at is a um it's sort of a binary option within the framework of the estimates so pfizer came out and said that they were gonna they raise their revenues for the year and they raised their revenues to be, I think it was about $71 billion mm -hmm. and 26 billion of that was gonna be for vaccines. And if you look at their earnings estimates going out, you know, in 2023, um, the analysts don't have it at 71 billion. It's it's something like 50, 50 to $55 billion. So there's this disconnect. And, and what the market is essentially saying is, well, we don't know how it's gonna play out. And the an analysts don't wanna you know, step out of bounds here. They're all sticking together. Um, but if everyone needs a vaccine, continuously needs a vaccine each year, and it stays with us for a while, then that 26 billion of this year's vaccines may still be 26 billion going forward. If it is, then there's a mismatch in what reality will be in the future and what, you know, what the estimates are, right? Just the estimates. If you know, we're, we're in it to get a couple of quarters of earnings. That's what we want to see because we want to hear the CEO. We want to see news like this and we want to see this long-term plan that, you know what, vaccines are here to stay. People are going to actually um, uh, be buy, having to get vaccines continuously each year, just like the flu shot. And Pfizer is going to be one of the main suppliers worldwide. And now the government's helping them. You know, that's going to keep that revenue number analysts will have to raise their numbers because if if right now they have 2003 2023 revenues too low so they're gonna have to raise that and if they raise that you know the stock should explode mm -hmm. so i was looking at i'm thinking that a, a little bit more of a long-term type of thought but 
um, they should we should be getting more news like this, and analysts should get increasingly more confident. Um, you know, the January twenty threes. Let's see this what they did here. So January two thousand twenty three long term. Okay, because this is you'll know the answer. We're, we're gonna you'll definitely know the answer here. I'm assuming that you're gonna know the you're gonna know most of the answer. They're gonna have to start incrementally increasing numbers by the end of the year. Um, here, this trade, someone's doing. It looks like they're long the 37 calls. They sold, they sold the 37 calls. Okay, to buy, they sold the 37 calls to buy double six thousand of the of the um, six thousand of the 55 calls. So they're they're saying, you know, we want to get double the size, we want to double leverage. So we're gonna take some money. They probably made some money here, and now we're just gonna basically double the size over here and get the 55 calls. And you see that there is 50, 55s, and 60s. Because if if the numbers are too low and vaccines are here to stay, and you got to add 20 something billion dollars, let's call it 20 billion dollars to 2023 revenues, th this stock is gonna start capturing. It's already a cheap stock. And when you get that and, and it starts showing growth, it's people are going to take this stock a lot higher. So I think that's that's the story there, and it's it's a little bit mm -hmm. of a an option on the framework of the way the ha analysts have their estimates. That nice. that's what we're that's what we're playing. Okay. Yeah. So that I, I don't know why the put buying. It is interesting to see the put buying stock is really strong on good news. I don't know. I don't know why that put buying. It is interesting though. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Cool, All right, cool. so let's take a look at it. So that, that, that's what I was looking at earlier before. Um, what else is there? Let me now point out to this uh, hacking article I see, I saw, and I can actually hacking? share it. Yes, hacking. It's still I want hacking? People to, yeah, in this age, there's going to be more. So that's the, that's the kind of interesting part of it. Right. So I want to show you this section here. Okay. Okay, so as U.S. faces a flurry of ransomware attacks, experts say the peak is still to come. And this, this, this stat was really interesting to me. And it says that roughly 85% of America's critical infrastructure is privately owned, and the private sector is not required to follow the strict cybersecurity guidelines set by the government. Now, you know, I'm thinking if these attacks keep coming, keep coming, and everything, the government might step in and say, hey, you guys got to, you know, step up your game with this. And that might bring some opportunity. If they're real, if they're real attacks. If, if they're if real, they're real attacks. attacks. Right, 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 right. <laughs> it's a real then, attack. I read an article and it made me think there's a percentage chance this is not even this is not even real but you know, it's it, all a, it's all an attack that, on it's all an attack on on what we were talking about is like it, it's it's coming up with something so that so that they can talk negative about about the the currencies uh, mm -hmm. bitcoin right bitcoin, so, you know right. so uh, when you read that you're like you, you, you can't put anything past what's happening i mean it's, uh -huh. it's you know right now you right now we it's look it looks like it's it was real and and then Maybe it's not, but mm -hmm. but then you see something like this ransomware as a service. So essentially, it's like it, I don't know if it's a virus, but you buy something, and then with that you can hack other stuff. How I understood it, it's it's pretty interesting. I mean, and um, you know, CrowdStrike ransomware is well as a surface. So basically, it's mm -hmm. just software that they put in machines and whatnot. And yeah, I mean, look, I think CrowdStrike is. I like CrowdStrike. We, we've been seeing F E Y E FireEye, um, mm -hmm. but let's take a look at. I, I mean, I like this chart in CrowdStrike a lot. Um, See here, go a little bit further out here, just to look at if you want to look at weekly. Okay, we'll look at the daily, and we will go. Let's go two years. Okay, so it's had a big run here. Uh, it spent the last six months digesting that run, which is a good thing. It's that's not a bad thing. Um, it it should be under a little bit of pressure after it makes a run like this. Right. This 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 is par for the course. Okay. So now we have here, let's call it right around 170 ish, even though this over here, let's call it 155, 170. You, you should you, you're looking at that over here. The high is at 250. We're somewhere in the middle, but it's trying to break through this right here after it dropped through. You, you, you saw here drop through resistance, 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 and it's trying to break out here. Um, probably trying to make a move towards the, this 250. Uh, again, this is a long, this is a big move from from one, you know, eight nine months, uh, six months going this way. Uh, it's about time for this thing to start moving up. You see the MACD had already come down. Okay, so this pushed the MACD all the way up here when it got to highs. The MACD has spent the last six months coming down, trying to move up, move up, and. You got a lower uh, lower high here. 
I'm sorry, higher low. And and now it's trying to look look, see if it can go this way, right? Um, this looks like a good chart. And and the 50 days moving up, they closed the gap from here to here on the 50 day. If you look there, right now it's it went from that to this and then started making its move back up. So there's a lot of good things I'm seeing on the chart here. The chart looks pretty good. And um, I haven't seen a ton of big uh, flow in in the name, although it looks like maybe there's some popping up here today. What's this, July? Yeah, so it looks like the July, okay, so the July 2.22.30s. It's, it's not a lot, but I would think that, you know, this is something that could actually break out. Mm -hmm. Let's try to get a a price here. So you took 170 to 250 is how much? 80 bucks. So 170 to 250, 80, 250 plus 80, 330. You know, can it get to 330? 330 would be somewhere, let's see here, It'd be up here. Okay. Which is interesting because it's probably oh. close to where that is, right? Right. Nice. So, so um, you know, can we get to two, th 330? I mean, it, I'm showing you. Tell me, you can't. You know, I mean, if if this if the, you get a a market where the uh, where the spoos and spies are going, you know, 450, 460. Yeah, I mean, they're gonna take things like this up. You get more ransom attacks, and you talk about you know the 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 flow, the money start to flow into this. Yeah, I mean, it it's they like this is a name they like. This is a name breaks out 250. It's gonna pop and go here. So earnings are in. In September one, so you look at something like this, and it, it's an expensive game, right? Because mm -hmm. it's a two hundred and twenty-six dollar stock, but uh, something you're looking for a breakout through two fifty. I would almost say maybe you wait for that breakout above two fifty. Uh, you know, it's you know you have this in your back pocket. Um, you want to make sure that it's actually going to break out because if it here to here, it's okay. It does look like it's going here, and it does look like it's trying to get to two fifty. It's here that you want to really say okay it breaks 250 and now it's up going it, it wants to go a lot higher that may take another five six months as well but you know you, you could try to position yourselves using options here if you'd like or you can just wait till the thing breaks 250 and you're buying it up here on a gap or lastly shorter term it mm -hmm. is breaking here you can get on for a little bit of a ride with like the 230 calls near term which i think you know if you look at the the volume that's what you know, people are doing today with, let's call it June, you know, next week options. They're looking for a breakout here to continue because they're looking at what we're looking at and they're playing here some volume, volume towards the 230s, 3,000 times. That looks like it was likely bought. So you see what I'm saying here? Capiche? Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I like the stock. Good chart. Mini breakout here, 250 stop. But, you know, people are playing around in the 230s. What was it the 230s? To 20, 230, something like that. Right? 225, 220, mainly the 230s. And they're mm -hmm. looking for a greater breakout. Um, how how much on that move? I think look, you got 180 here to 225. Okay, so how much is that? 45. 45 yep. plus 45 plus 205 is 250. See how that works? Nice. All right, so you go one. Nice. This is here. And then you just go here, which gets you right to the high. So I think that's interesting. Short-term play, if you wanted to play that, that that seems um, interesting with the potential breakout right here. Cool. Okay. All right? Nice. Sound Crowd like strike. It. There you go. Crowd. What was that? Yeah, okay. Hackers. Yes, Hackers, you should yeah. find that. It, it's. <laughs> I look at Zero Hedge all the time just because they always have some – some. They, it's like I think the same way, so I appreciate the thought. that they, they, they found um, – the CEO, the CEO made a comment about paying the paying the the ransom, and the JSB got CEO paid the ransom after they got back. They they actually got back the computer system and then paid the ransom. It, it's a little odd. The whole story is a little odd, but um, <laughs> it, 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 it's a good read. You got to find it on Zero Hedge. Okay, right. cool, cool, nice. Maybe Did we'll, we'll find the... it and we'll send it to send it send it on email. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing something in the Baron saying don't expect a hundred oil anytime soon, and they were talking about. Um... Don't expect a hundred L. Huh? Okay, so let's see. Where's uh let's look at Oxy first. I just want to see what's going on here. Oxy's up a little bit. Okay. So yeah, you know, I, I actually misspoke. I, I think um 
when I said hundred dollar oil, it wasn't Goldman Sachs. It was Goldman Sachs at eighty dollar oil at the end by the end of the year. J.P. Morgan was the one saying SuperCycle could hit hundred by the end of the year. Um, mm -hmm. We're also now seeing um, the, the article. I, I think I saw that article. The article is basically saying, uh, you know, basically trying to poo poo that that price, but people are pointing to open the open interest in um, in oil at the hundred level and saying there's people buying these hundred calls. I'll tell you what, you know, what's scary when you see an Iranian uh, ship. Okay. Crossing. Okay. An Iranian ship crossing the Atlantic ocean to go to mm -hmm. Venezuela for the first time, you, you don't see Iranian ships going, you know, down uh, uh, underneath that South Africa and then heading over to South America. Yes, they do business. You just don't see warships doing that. Uh, you know, that is, that that to me is I, I read that I couldn't believe it, and they're taking pictures and putting it out there. It's a little scary. Mm -hmm. You think the U.S. It, it, the U.S. is saying they're watching it, they have the Navy there looking at it, but I mean, it, it's a little scary when some when a, a country is basically saying we don't care. Like to me, it feels like I don't know. Does Russia or China got their back? Does somebody say, "Don't worry, they're not going to touch you." You go. They're not going to touch it. Is it China giving them the okay to go do what they need to do because we're heading into Taiwan's area? You know, that's that's China's way of saying we could play the same game if we want, right? And we're going to send an Iranian ship, and you know, you get closer to Venezuela. Venezuela is not that far from you know South Florida from Miami Beach. It's mm -hmm. just it's it's not that far, and you get a warship get parking right. At, I mean, now you're talking about. The, you know, the game of risk, you know, I used to, my yes. cousin used to beat me on risk all the time. He used to kill, I used to be, get so angry and I'd want to keep playing and playing. It would get so so angry. Well, yeah. But, but I, when I think of this and I just think of pieces moving around and I think of him actually moving the piece and I'm thinking, man, I, this is, you know, it feels like they got somebody on their shoulder saying, don't worry about it. We got you. They're not going to do anything. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. Iranian ship goes out there. And now that it's us's next move. What are you going to blow up the ship? Blow up the ship. It's World War Three, right? So, mm -hmm. what do you do? You got to be diplomatic, and who knows? But first time, Iranian ship coming through, warship coming across the Atlantic Ocean. Man, that's scary. Mm -hmm. That's scary. So, hundred dollar oil. It could be two hundred if you know the 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 what is it? The uh, Humez Humaz, the port of something, the main port over there mm -hmm. between Iran and and to get out of the the, the that area with the oil. Mm -hmm. it, it, you can get 200 oil if, if they blow that up. So right. I don't know. I don't know where it's all leading, but you know, hundred dollar, hundred dollar oil. I don't know. You have inflation, you have prices, us it's based in dollars. Nobody knows. You got mm -hmm. people buying options on the hundred dollars. I, I think all of these names, Halliburton, Oxy, MPC, the, the big CVX, um, Chevron, Exxon Mobil, these things, if if oil keeps trading higher, they produce so much cash flow. And I think people are starting to wake up to the fact that it's taken a year to get the infrastructure deal to go through. How long do you think it's going to take for them to build everything? And actually, right. you know, you know, is this plan really going to be where in, in, say, five years that there's no more oil? I mean, people are going to – I think people come into the idea, oh, you know what? We're going to use oil for quite some time. Yeah, the long term, you know, there's this terminal value here. But I, I'm, I'm not sure – I'm not sure that we uh, – you know, we're, we're quite there yet. Mm -hmm. So okay. anyway, that, you know, that's what I would, I would look at those names that, that we've seen. What else? Any other questions? Uh, actually, I just found something here on the UOA board and it's one sure. stock we like. It's AMD. AMD. Yes. Ah, okay. What do you got? It looks like some either call buying or call buying back. Call buying or call buying back. All right. Let's take okay. a look. AMD is interesting. I mean, the... The CEO saved the saved the day with the buyback announcement right when it was cracking, which is coincidence at best here. Um, okay, so which one's this? September's, yes. September's. It's a lot of options here. Let's see, what are we doing here? The 75s. So it looked like it might be it might be a funding a trade. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a funding trade. So over here, the 75s with 82 mm -hmm. and a halves. About nine thousand or so. Buying. I think they were selling these. And now buying back. I think, yeah. And and they say so these. I think they bought the. If I can remember correctly, I think they were buying the eighty five ninety five like call spread. I think they might have sold this. This might have been. We'd have to look to see what happened here. But it looks like, 
I mean, it could be it could be call buying here. September, you get earn you get earnings, mm. but it's in the money. I'm not sure they would be they would want this one. So, uh, I I would say I'm not sure what exactly they're doing there. But I, I'll tell you what I'm looking at the chart out of the corner of my eye, and it, it, you know all all of these uh, give me uh, these semis give me a headache because they should be way higher with the demand and supply the way it is, but the supply just fell off the the cliff even though some there was an analyst saying that it, it should come we should start seeing some normality at the end of 2021 they're all over the map someone's saying 2022 23 then an analyst comes out and says nah we're going to see stuff I, nobody knows here um if it does come within the next few months they start seeing more bullishness then this all of these semis will they're going to start trading like wildfire okay uh -huh. so just keep that in mind and and yeah i mean it trades well Look, she, she supported it right here on this move. It trades very well. It's up, up on the 50-day. The 50-day has done its work, right? Remember, this is a large move up here. We have – it's a good chart, right, because it's a large move up here that was basically digested for a long time, okay? We're talking about August to now June, almost a full year of digestion. That 73, 74 level is a big level. Let's call this the highest here – we're somewhere around here and here. Okay, so 95 and let's call it 80s. Let, let's call that this range up here. So we're down here. This is clear, right? 73, 74. It's clear, clear little range here, a couple of bucks. And um you you can I can tell you there's there's a lot of activity and puts um in the 70s and 65s. It's because if this breaks, it's it's this right here is gonna be captured. Right, that that's going to be at risk, and you can get it to fifty-two. Not because it's worth fifty-two, just because there's a lot of people holding here that might cave to push this down on a quick move. It might be one second where it trades in the fifties. This is a level here again. Okay, so it might trade here, but fifty-two is there's a risk here. The volume started on this day here, which is right around fifty-five, fifty-seven. But mm -hmm. I would say this range is not out of the question because this happened in four days. Okay, it was good earnings, boom, 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 straight all the way up. You know, that's at risk here, and 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 people are buying puts here. So you're seeing put buying here um, just in case, right? And even at the 75 level, just in case. And you're seeing, you know, people have been looking for this pullback. All the way. People are buying calls up here thinking it was going to 130 when it was here. That's what we were looking at mm -hmm. first. Then Intel came out, and that's, you know, they, they came out with their new – product and and new ceo and this happened and now you know look if things are good this is a good stock it amd is definitely a, a great stock to own it's just at what price if if things don't last how, how long is the world going to give a pass to the semiconductor industry for the next two years oh there's a shortage we're not going to make our numbers you know that that does that works for a quarter, two quarters, and then people say it's dead money. And why are we? Let's just wait till they say it's good, and then we'll jump in. We'll miss twenty points, but we're going to take our money and and make a hundred points on some some other names. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Right. Right. So cool. so this is so this is we're seeing both plays. We're seeing calls and and puts, but we're also seeing on this side we were seeing more call spreads where um, people are just trying to get some upside. And we even played it over here where we were saying the 80, 90 call spread on the podcast for two bucks was probably a good trade. Um, and, and that worked out and people would be, be able to get out on that day on the open here to move. E even as it went down, you'd be able to get out here for profit here. Same thing. If you're going to buy calls, I would say probably call spreads are, are good. Probably um, 85, 95 ish is probably pretty good. Cause you're going to run into a, a wall up here. Um, okay. And and, but I don't know. Buying the in the money call seems more of a a, uh, a way to buy back their options, their call options. Maybe they sold them when the stock was around here. We'd have to look at the data when they sold them. Stock was down here, and they sold them, and now they're just buying it back, which is still bullish. It still means that they're probably long the stock. They did this overweight, and now they're thinking, okay, things are looking a little bit better. I want. I don't want that call. I don't want that that uh, call overweight anymore. I want to take that back, and because we think it's going to go. So still bullish. Um, but but maybe maybe not as bullish as it was if it was just coming in first time buying calls. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. All right, cool. So this is AMD. I I mean I like it. I like the setup. I'm I'm always concerned about 
this break, right? This this area right here broke a little bit for a week, and then this is when she came in and basically said, "Now we're doing this huge buyback." Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Cool. 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 Awesome. Awesome. Oops. What else? Anything else? Okay. Let's uh, let's see if anybody has any questions. We have an um. Okay. Any questions? If you guys have any questions, just comment them down here. And then, uh, if you see any UA, anything, and then in the meantime, uh, you, while you're thinking about a question, make sure you like the video. Helps us out a lot. One thing that um, one thing that is um, that it, that is doing well with the market today is you know gold has had a, a bad couple of let's call it ten days, um, you know, or a week, and and silver. But I, I'm seeing, you know, with the number today, you start seeing. You know, the, people coming back into that, um, into that, into those names. So I, I still think there's a big, there's a big uh, trend there, and I don't think that that when they start going for gold, they don't stop for a while. It's usually once it turns, it starts going for a quarter, two quarters. So um, you know, if you look at the gold, uh, it, it's something I'm looking at today. You look at something like gold. This doesn't look like a top. This looks like a straight move of buying. And you can uh -huh. look at, you know, we talked about this right at, this is the end of the quarter right here. This is the end of the quarter, okay? And this is the day one of the quarter. And the big money on these types of trades, they come in on day one. This might have been day one. I, I don't know exactly. No, look, yeah, this is day one, April 1st. So this is the end of the quarter right here. And you could see that they basically, I mean, this is just straight buying um, as much as they want here. Mm -hmm. Just buying, buying comes off a little bit here, here, and it came off a little bit here. Um, you know, you want to see it take out here, gold take out this. It's going a little sideways here, um, but it's getting a little bit of mojo today on, on that number. I, I suspect they will continue to take this. It might might be dead for a month here, so... We had one month, two month, maybe the third month here. But I suspect into the end of the month they're gonna to try to take keep taking gold. These uh -huh. things, this was six months. You know, they don't just come back into it, and it's it, once they're once they're doing it like this. If you can get this, you see this right here. You can get this here, but yep. we're not seeing that. We, it's just these little drops. We we'd like to see it continue this path going towards like one ninety two hundred, like uh -huh. one ninety to. Yeah, close to two hundred. So that that's what I'm looking at here because I'm looking closely at silver and gold and 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 making sure they're intact. And and now that you mentioned this, let's actually why don't you what do you say we uh, pull up the spy chart and take a look at what's going on because it's been very resilient. It's incredible. Yeah. It's it's really incredible. I think um, it's 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 been absolutely incredible. The, the, mm -hmm. It has not moved, um, and here it's having a little bit of trouble. Although it's trying to, it feels like it's trying to break out. Um, let's just go to three months. Let's see, let's see here. Six months. Okay, so and let's use that thing here. Okay, so we have. Let's just call it this. Okay. So this is positive development the fact that it doesn't go down it's not going up either but if it doesn't go down after doing sort of this dance right it, this was this is positive then it didn't go down and it's basically you know for we, we use 416 and a half for literally almost two months here where it's up and down a percent around 416 and a half. Um, again, this is now starting to break out here. It's a good development, positive development. Um, you know, the JP Morgan guy says, this is the moment where we're about to take off. <laughs> and he thinks that, and, and frankly, the lack of, of movement to the downside makes me believe that it's about to take off as well. Okay, so the lack of movement to the downside is telling, you're looking at something, you're reading things that are negative that, maybe the, the world is not doing this or there's inflation and whatnot. You know, when, when there's always this timing issue, there might be, if you believe this prices are going up and there's inflation, there's timing issues before the thing crashes when everybody, interest rates got to go up and whatnot. There's this last gasp, if you will, of 
prices going straight up. Prices of food are going up. Prices of homes going up. Prices of cars are going up. Stock market prices are going to go up. So everything goes up and everything dollar denominated goes up and you can get a very strong last move. I mean, just look at, let's, let's get some context here just to help us really think about this, about what could happen, right? Um, let's just see month. Yeah, sorry about that. Just trying to be cute. Hmm. Okay. Here, here's the S and P, right? And you know we have this thing here that is it's a beast. Okay, let's draw some lines. This is a monthly chart going back to the financial crisis, and just going back here monthly, right? Just thinking about in years. You know, you have this here and you have this here, down here. This is, it, it. I remember this. I remember exactly where it was when we were right here. And I literally told someone that I thought we can go to 2,400. And they laughed at me and, they and I said, yeah. I said, you know, they're going to pump so much money into the system. That was my idea. Did I have the foresight to believe there? They, like I said it thinking, let me just be a little, you know, throw some hyperbole out there and just get some get a reaction yes, yeah. when it actually happened i was like thinking oh my gosh then it actually goes here <laughs> it's insane you know so you know but i'm looking at this and i see you know there's clearly stuff going on here um you know i see this this is what people were looking at when we were here okay they were looking at this okay and then the idea is that when it, this is you, i think it's called a bullhorn or microphone or, i don't know Techno analysis, you can go look it up yourself. But uh -huh. but this was happening. And then when it breaks out, it's it's this is this is potential moonshot here. You know, this is now one thing, one thing I would say here is we had 330 first, right? This was around where we were. We went all the way down to um 210. Okay. So we're looking at these levels, but this sort of 360 to 200 microphone, I think it's a microphone or a bullhorn, I don't know, 360 to 200, it's about 160 points, 160 plus 360 is how much? It's 520, mm -hmm. you know, and then, and then can it go like this in one shot to end all, you know, to be the end of all ends, right? You know, to be the, can it, you know, at some point, it, at some point I'm looking for that, right? Right. I'm looking for that type of, you know, mm -hmm. move or you know, this was the financial crisis here, so we didn't actually get that. But w when there's inflation and things like that, you just like this had a move. This this V, right? I'd love to see that reverse V somewhere. That would be that would be telling. You're not mm -hmm. gonna catch it. You're gonna miss it. But it it should start. It's this is going up methodically still, and you know when things go up go up methodically, like this, eventually they start turning and then eventually they catch all the shorts because the, the logic is the psychology people are shorting this move to look for a pullback you don't get it you keep getting you keep getting uh bigger in your short and then eventually it just go, rocket ships up until everybody just like a short squeeze just like the gamma squeeze we're talking about with the with the big meat with the meme stocks it's the same psychology it's just as things are floating up people are saying negative it and they're shorting it and they're not long and then eventually they have to cave everybody gets long and then it does sort of that dance and it comes back down. That's that's sort of what it feels like it wants to do if you just look at it long term. So that's the context. Now, mm -hmm. what the hell does that mean for next week? I have no idea. But <laughs> you know, yeah, at the end of the day, you're looking at things and saying, okay, this is um, let's go back to reality here. And the reality is that we are in uh, a period of Quite, it's been quite a while where it it really hasn't. It's a mirage. It's not moving, you know. Trading up and down one percent for two and a half, three months uh, makes things a little bit difficult. Okay, um, and so you, you're trying to be a little careful with your entries, with exits. You're trying to whenever you're using options in this time of time, in this time of time frame, you just want to be a little bit careful. But I suspect that I think this J.P. Morgan guy may be right. If I had to guess. Uh, lay odds, I'd say 60, 40 here. We actually make a move towards 435 first. Um, you know, maybe, 
Yeah, I would say about 435 is kind of what I'm looking at. 435, 441. Mm -hmm. And then let's take a look there, right? We're looking at, I'm looking at 424, 405. That's 20 bucks. So ultimately, I was looking at 445, 450. Um, but let's start with just 435 ish. See what happens there. Mm -hmm. Okay. That that's sort of the way I'm looking at the world. Um, how it gets there, it, it's it's just been not moving. But this thing's changing here. Stocks stocks are you know the the market's trying to trying to get past this level. There's also a lot of options out there. Um, mm -hmm. And and you know with volatility so low, when volatility so low, it allows you know, when volatility is so low and the options are fairly cheap, it allows people to buy more and more and more options. Um, that's a good thing and a bad thing. It could cause this, this, um, this, it, it can cause a well either way, a gamma well, where basically as the people who are buying these calls eventually have to sell out, um, then there's this whole uh, complex, volatility complex that's selling volatility and they're creating um, a gamma well where with volatility. So it's it's a combination of a lot of things that are going on here that are keeping things together. On top of the on top of that, it's everything we talked about today. There is inflation, there's not inflation. The market's going up, the market's gonna crash. It's so it's so one way and and and, and uh, on on the negative side and then it's you know completely on the other side and on the positive side. So I don't know. I I, I can't tell you when this stops. It's likely that it stops after June expiration. Mm -hmm. After June, June is always a big month with a lot of options. Let's get rid of that and let's see where we are in July. Maybe you get a surprise. I think a couple of years ago there was a big surprise in August. There's a couple of years where August was, you know, a tough month. So I think that's that's kind of a, a, an interesting time period to look at. Okay. All right. Cool. Awesome. Cool, man. Awesome. All right. I think well, that's it. That's it. Thank you, Felix. Thanks. We'll everybody. see you on Monday. We'll see you on Monday. Great Thanks, episode. Man. Like the video, and we'll see you. Bye. Take care, guys. Bye.